The Peter Schiff Show. Well, I'm about to venture further down the road of political incorrectness. And I'm going to talk about the new controversy surrounding Indiana's religious freedom law and more in particular, the press conference that I had the displeasure of listening to uh, given by Indiana Governor Mike Pence, who signed the law and who is now backtracking uh, based on uh, pressure from, uh, you know, mainly from outside the state. So if you were, you know, hoping that this would be a podcast on the 200 point drop in the Dow today or all the bad economic news that's been coming out, you're going to have to wait for my next podcast. I mean, don't worry. Uh, There's plenty of economic stuff coming, but I got to vent a little bit. I really got to get this one off my chest because, you know, when I was listening to the Pence press conference, because I was actually in my car, Uh, It might have been a a more nauseating experience if I had to look at the guy. But just listening to it, you know, made me feel kind of nauseous. And, you know, this guy is a Republican. And, you know, as governors go, he's probably not that bad. But, you know, if I lived in Indiana, I couldn't even vote for the guy after listening to this. Right. I, I mean, I couldn't vote for the Democrats. So either I'd abstain or I'd maybe I'd vote for the libertarian if there was a libertarian candidate. But I really, you know, cannot take this. It makes me ashamed even to be an American that this is what it's come to in my country. And, you know, if you're wondering, you know, the tweets, I, I was sending out these tweets today and on Twitter all about discrimination. And so if you're wondering why I had four or five tweets related to discrimination, this is it. It's not about the sexual Uh, discrimination, the gender-based stuff that I was talking about in my last couple of podcasts. It was all about this, uh, uh, you know, this supposed discrimination against gays. uh, And that's what all these tweets were about. And by the way, you know, if you're not following me on Twitter, you should follow me. I only have about 55,000 or so Twitter uh, followers, which, you know, is less than half of, uh, you know, what I have uh, on you know the YouTube subscribers, it's you know, almost half of what I got on my Facebook likes, and I'm not really sure what I've got on just people listening to the podcast. But obviously, there's a lot of people that follow me on some various social media outlets that don't follow me on Twitter. Now I don't know you know what that says maybe about Twitter. Maybe Twitter's not as big a deal, but I've been I've been tweeting out, and and, and so if you're not you know getting my tweets, go over to my Twitter page. And, you know, sign up or follow me, whatever you do. And then, you know, you'll get these things. But the reason I was saying he's out tweeting like a little uh, bird this afternoon, because I was outraged at this at this press conference. So if you don't know what it's about, I'll backtrack and give you a little information on on this story. Now, there have been some high profile lawsuits filed by gay couples, I don't know whether they're male or female, and it's really immaterial, where uh, a gay couple has, you know, tried to hire a photographer or a baker, right, a photographer to photograph their wedding or a baker to bake their cake, where the photographer or baker has refused based on the fact that they don't want to be associated with a gay wedding. And generally, it's because of religion. I mean, after all, why else would you turn down a, 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 a paying gig, right? I mean, if you're a photographer, you want to photograph as many weddings as you can, right? And, and so the only reason that you would turn down a gay wedding generally would be if you really had a deep-seated religious objection to the concept And you just didn't want to be a part of it, right? And of course, if I were a gay couple and I wanted, you know, if I were a gay guy and I was, you know, getting married and I was hiring a photographer, I would want to hire a photographer that approved of my lifestyle and that was going to be happy to be there. I mean, why would I want to drag some religious fanatic uh, and of course, she might not be fanatic. I'm not putting down people with religion, but why would I want to drag some guy that is doesn't even approve of what I'm doing? Why would I want that person, you know, at my wedding in the first place? I mean, I would be worried. Number one, that they would just do a lousy job. They wouldn't really take their best pictures. I mean, if they if they think gay marriage is wrong, 
I mean, maybe just even subconsciously they're going to sabotage what they're doing. I mean, they're not going to be on their A game. And, of course, if I'm forcing them to go and they don't want to, they may deliberately screw up my uh, my wedding pictures. In fact, it's probably even worse for the guy that's baking your cake. I mean, do you really want, if you're gay, do you really want a homophobe or some religious person that really thinks you're, you know, you're going to hell and you're, you know, you're a sinner? And do you really want that person Baking your cake? I mean, you got to eat it. I mean, what if the guy spits in it? Or worse, what if he pees in the batter and then makes your cake? I don't want to take any chances, right? So if I am trying to hire a, a, a baker, you know, I'd like to make sure that the baker has no problem with homosexuals. Because if he does, I don't want to bake on my cake, right? And I'm going to go to the next baker. And of course, you would also think, you know, Maybe some photographers might want to specialize in gay weddings. I don't know. Maybe there's a little difference in, you know, the style of some of the photography. I mean, there could be uh, a photographer that says, look, I specialize in gay weddings. Why? So what if, what if a straight person calls up a photographer that specializes in gay weddings and says, I'd like to hire you. Sorry, I don't do straight weddings. Just do gay weddings. Should that be illegal? Well, why? I mean, why can't you specialize in something? Somebody can specialize in, uh, in, in gay weddings. Somebody can specialize in straight weddings. What if someone wants to specialize in Hispanic weddings or Jewish weddings or um, black weddings? I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's some little intricacy. Certainly Jewish weddings are going to be somewhat different than a, a, a Catholic wedding. But maybe, you know, why can't somebody specialize? I mean, how many photographers are there? How many bakers are there? Right. To, to, you know, I, I, one of my tweets, I said, you know, the mark of a free society is your willingness to tolerate intolerance. Right. You know, the liberals always talk about how everybody has to be tolerant, but they're the most intolerant people of other people's intolerances. You see, I don't care. I'm Jewish. Right. If someone doesn't want to photograph a Jewish wedding, I don't care. There's plenty of people who will. They don't want to bake. If there's a, an anti-Semite who doesn't want to bake a cake for a Jew, Fine. There's plenty of bakers who will bake me a cake. It's no big deal. You know, I mentioned, you know, before on my radio show, you know, if there's a guy that, you know, uh, owns a bakery and he doesn't like Jews, right? And I just assume that baker put a sign on his window, you know, no Jews, because then I I know not to patronize his business, right? I mean, why would I want to give money to a guy that that, that is an anti-Semite? Now, most anti-Semites wouldn't hang up a sign because as much as they hate Jews, they like their money more. So they're not going to refuse service to a Jew. They're just going to hate him, you know, quietly. You know, well, I'd rather get the hate out in the open so I can avoid it. Right. So that, that, that that's me. But so that that is the backdrop. So what happened is you had some couple or some individual doesn't want to photograph a gay wedding. And now they get slapped with a lawsuit. Now, first of all, imagine this. Here's what I think probably happened. I don't think this is a situation where somebody just, you know, called up a, a, a photographer and and said, hey, you know, can you photograph my wedding? And, you know, by the way, it's a gay wedding and blah, blah. And then they and the person said, oh, no, thank you. We don't do gay weddings. I think that the individual who filed the lawsuit was looking for a, uh, a, a a photographer or a baker to sue. And what they probably did is they got the, the, the yellow pages, or you know, probably more likely not the yellow pages. They probably took Google, and they, you know, whatever town they lived in, and they Google uh, wedding photographers in that town. And, you know, they come up, and they probably started calling down the list. And maybe when they got to the 10th or the 20th page or the 30th page, after making all these calls, they finally found the photographer that refused to do the wedding because it was gay, right? Because most photographers are going to do the gay wedding. Most photographers who had never done a gay wedding will be excited. Oh, I've never done a gay wedding. This is going to be great. This could be my first gay wedding. Now, of course... A gay couple hearing that might prefer, oh, you haven't done any gay weddings before? Oh, well, I want to get somebody that has more experience and has done more gay weddings. Should that be legal or illegal? But this is what they probably had. They probably had a search. And it probably took them a long time to find the one person who had such a religious, 
you know, deep-seated religious conviction that that person was willing to turn down money that they probably needed because their own religious conviction said, you know, uh, I, I can't participate in something that I think is morally wrong. Oh, 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 I'm suing you, right? This is all grandstanding. The person is not wrong. It, it does not harm you, right? If I, and I can't, forget about what if I was homosexual, I am Jewish. If I called up a photographer and I said, hey, I'm getting married, can you take my wedding? And, they, and the guy said, Schiff, you wouldn't be by any chance Jewish, would you? Oh, matter of fact, I am. Well, sorry, I don't do Jewish weddings. Am I harmed by that? No. Again, I'm glad that the guy told me. Thank you for being honest, because I really wouldn't want you at my wedding as an anti-Semite. You know, I'm glad you were up front with me and told you me that you didn't like Jews because now I'm going to hire somebody else. Right. But of course, most anti-Semites wouldn't say that, you know, because they want my money. They want the job. That's why you're in business. You're not in business to turn down jobs. I mean, these companies are advertising. They're trying to get weddings to photograph. So it, you really have to have deep seated religious beliefs to turn down a paying job. And I respect that. Right. And even if I was gay, I might respect that. You think what I'm doing is wrong and you're going to you're going to you're going to you know, you're going to take a stand and it's going to cost you money to stand on principle. Why can't you respect that? You know, homosexuals talk about tolerance, right? Can't they want people to tolerate their lifestyle. And most people do. But some people don't tolerate that. Except the fact that not everybody is going to accept you. And don't try to force people to accept you against their will. That's because that only makes it worse, right? The best you, you win people over with kindness, right? You, you catch more flies with with honey or sugar than than vinegar, right? So this kind of approach that they have is is only going to backfire. But let me you know move forward to you know the infuriating part of it. So anyway, so in Indiana, they then pass this law, and it's the Religious Freedom Law. Actor, uh, religious freedom, right? It's about now. Of course, they can't call it the you know, you know, allowing discrimination against homosexuals law. I mean, that obviously can't be the title. So they have to couch it as religious freedom. And again, I think people should have a right to discriminate, right? You you shouldn't have to have a religious reason for it, right? It shouldn't have. To, it, it shouldn't be. Well, it's okay to discriminate against gays if your discrimination is based on religion. But if it's based on some other factor, then it's not OK, because, again, how do you look into the mind of somebody and know why they're doing something? I mean, let's say I don't want to go to a gay wedding, but it's got nothing to do with my religion. Let's say I have some other reason that I don't want to be at a gay wedding, whatever it is. But now I've got to pretend that it's based on religion in order to, you know, in order to satisfy the requirement of this law. But and now, you know, now if there's a lawsuit. Well, how do you how do you prove that it was religion. Do I got to go out? You know, how often do you go to church? You know, I mean, it, 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 you should be allowed to discriminate. I mean, that's individual liberty. That's freedom. You know, all this idea that you have a right not to be discriminated against is, is BS. You don't. This is a special privilege that governments, politicians have bestowed on favorite classes in order to win their votes. Right. But you can't say, hey, I, I, I'm a woman. Therefore, nobody can discriminate against me based on my gender. No, if somebody wants to discriminate against you, that's their right. And they also have to deal with the consequences of that, you know, which could be very severe. You know, if you refuse to hire women or blacks, uh, that can hurt your business because you could be giving up, you know, passing up some very qualified applicants. I mean, imagine if you had a restaurant and you put up a sign that said, you know, no blacks, whites only. How many people would actually eat in your restaurant? Pro probably hardly any. I mean, do I believe that somebody should have a right to open up a restaurant and, and you know, and, and, and put that sign? Sure, if they want to see how that, you know, let's, let's see how if they and if they survive. Again, I've said this before. If, 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 if there is a guy that wants to put up a rest, have a restaurant that says, you know, whites only and there's an and there's a bunch of whites that eat there. I don't care. I wouldn't even want to eat with those whites. Right. And if I was black, I wouldn't want it. So why can't bigots have a restaurant for themselves? It's not like, you know, there's there's not enough restaurants to choose from. 
There's all kinds of choice. Look, you know, there. What, 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 if, what if there's an Italian restaurant? Can I walk into an Italian restaurant and demand uh, chop suey? You know, so no, no, we're an Italian restaurant. I don't care. I want, I want Chinese food. Well, no, go to a Chinese restaurant. You can't force the Italian restaurant to make you chop, chop suey any more than you can go into a, to a, to a, to a, a Chinese restaurant and demand that they make you spaghetti and meatballs. You, 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 there's all kinds of restaurants. Pick the ones that have the stuff that you want. I mean, you could bring religion into it. Can I go into a Jewish delicatessen and, and demand a ham sandwich on white bread with mayo? They're not going to make me that. But I mean, you know, so y- you got to pick. There's all kinds of restaurants. So can, why can't there be a restaurant for bigots? Why can't there be a, a restaurant for anti-Semites? Why can't there be a restaurant for homophobes? Who cares? What are they hurting? Nobody, right? It's no big deal if somebody wants to do it. But the fact of the matter is most people who open up a restaurant are not going to want to cater to such a small minority. Who's going to want a, ra- a restaurant that says, yeah, I just want the homophobes at my, at my, uh, at my uh, restaurant, or I just want, you know, blacks. No, you're going to want everybody. You're going to want to have a, 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 a broad an appeal as possible because that's your best chance of staying in, in business. But anyway, getting back to the point, because I keep by digressing here, um, but so Indiana passes this law to prevent the, you know, the religious individual from being sued by a gay couple for, you know, they're not photographing their wedding or baking their wedding cake. This is the whole idea. And it basically says, look, if you have a religious objection to something, then you can't be forced to do it. So somebody can't force you to do something that violates your religious beliefs. That's the point of the law, religious freedom, right? Now, of course, the impetus for the law, the whole idea was to prevent homosexuals from forcing uh, religious uh, Christians or whatever, whoever, Jews, I guess the Jews could be have this belief if they do, I don't know. Um, but... To say, look, you don't have to photograph a wedding against your will. You don't. You, you, you know, you, you, somebody can't enslave you and compel you to do something that you don't want to do. Right now, I guess if if you don't have a religious objection, well, then you're forced to do it. You know, even if you don't want to. But if it's a religious uh, freedom, then you know you 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 can refuse. Well, anyway, so Pence signs the law, and now there's all this outrage. Right, all across the country. We're gonna boycott the state. We're not gonna have any basketball games there. We're you know, all these big companies, you know, we're gonna pull our advertising. I mean, all this pressure now from the left wing machine, right, of feigned outrage. Like, oh no, this is horrible because this law allows discrimination against homosexuals, which it does. But what infuriates me is then when you have the governor, right? coming on and calling a press conference. Pence is up there, Mike Pence, and he says, the law does not allow discrimination against homosexuals. Of course it does. That's why he signed it. That is the very intent of the law. And he's like, well, I don't know how anybody could have gotten that impression. Well, because that's what the law does. What do you mean? What do you mean? How could anybody get that impression? So he's trying to walk this fine line, have his cake and eat it it too, right? In court, you know, uh, having nothing to do with, uh, you know, the homosexual uh, or the bakers or who who sues them. But he wants to appeal to the religious conservatives in his home state by saying, yes, I signed this, uh, you know, Religious Freedom Act. But then he wants to claim that I didn't actually. There's no actual religious freedom in the act because in his press conference, he said that he wants to clarify the law and he wants to amend it with some new language that says nothing in this law, right, shall be construed as to allow anybody to discriminate against anybody for any reason or some words to that effect. In other words, he doesn't want to repeal the law. He just wants to neuter it. He just wants to render it meaningless. He wants to write a law that says that you can refuse to photograph a gay wedding, but that nothing in the law should be construed as to mean that you can refuse to photograph a gay wedding, right? So he's, the law is now going to contradict itself. So it's a law that accomplishes nothing. So if the law doesn't accomplish anything, 
Why pass it? What's it there for? You know, because how how can you how can you not discriminate against uh, homosexuals if you're allowed to refuse service to homosexuals? So that's what so infuriates me is that the guy can't stand up for what he pretends to believe in. This is what bothers me about politics. It's trying to appease everybody, being all things to all people and have absolutely no conviction, stand for nothing mean nothing. Why can't he have the guts to say, you know what? Yes, this law does give some people the right to discriminate against homosexuals. And you know what? It's okay. Right? It's okay if they do that. And you know what? So what? Because how many people will? Very few. I mean, most homosexuals, I mean, if you're in a normal business, you don't even know the sexual preference of your customers or your job applicants, unless they want to share it. Now, yes, there are some homosexuals that can be very flamboyant, like very obviously in your face uh, with uh, the fact that they're gay. But the vast majority of gay people, I mean, unless they tell you they're gay, you don't know that they're gay. I mean, you could have a feeling. I mean, some people have better gaydar than others. Uh, but certainly, you know, if you're just if you have a, a store, a restaurant, I mean, you know, people walking in and out. I mean, you don't know, you know. Uh, and, and so even if people could discriminate against homosexuals, it'd be very difficult to do it. Now, a wedding obviously is different. I mean, you have a pretty good idea uh, if, you know, if you go to a wedding and there's two guys at the altar, pretty good chance they're gay. Right. So obviously it's a little bit you know, easier if you want to discriminate against gays, you know, a wedding photographer you know, that's easier, right? Or a baker, right? You know, guy says, yeah, I want you to bake me a wedding cake. We don't need any brides. Just put two grooms on there. You have an idea that you're baking a cake for a a gay wedding. But why doesn't Mike Pence stand up and say, you know what? It's okay. Yes, we have some people who are very religious and it's against their religious beliefs. They have nothing necessarily against gays. They just have something against gays getting married. They have a different view of marriage. Uh, they look at it with a certain sense of, you know, it's a religious, sacred ceremony uh, with God, and they just don't want to participate. I mean, they don't want to stop uh, gay people from getting married, but they don't want to be a party to the ceremony. They don't want to be there. They don't want to photograph it. They don't want to bake a cake. And that's just the way it is. What is wrong with defending that? And if again, if I was gay, would I care? No, I don't care at all. I mean, it's just a small segment of this community that holds everybody else hostage. But here's part of the other problem is there is some inherent hypocrisy in this, because on the one hand, let's assume you say we are going to allow discrimination based on sexual preference. Right. But we're not going to allow discrimination based on race or gender or, uh, or these criteria then you do sound a bit hip, you know, hypocritical. Well, so you're saying it's okay to discriminate against gays, but it's not okay to discriminate against women or blacks, right? And so you look hypocritical when you have this standard, right? And you know, now some people try to say, well, be, well, homosexuality is about conduct, but not necessarily. I mean, I still believe that homosexuals is 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 part of your genetic makeup. I don't think people choose to be homosexual. I think they're born homosexual and it's not a choice that they make. I think most people, if they had a choice, would choose heterosexuality. It's certainly the easier path to travel. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people try to hide the fact that they're gay, you know, and fewer people do that today. And I think that's a good thing, but certainly there historically has been a stigma. And so normally you would have people who are actually gay trying to act heterosexual. I mean, they, they might date women, they might even get married and they're, you know, they're in the closet. Very, I don't think there's ever been a case where a heterosexual has pretended to be gay. You know, where someone's like, you know, I'm actually gay. I'm actually straight, but I'm just going to sleep with guys and be with guys and, 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 and pretend that, that I'm gay because I just want to be part of the gay community. I want to be, I don't think that's ever happened. I don't even think that could happen. I don't even think it's possible for a straight guy to live a gay life. Right. A gay man, I guess, can live a straight life because plenty of them have done it, you know, but I don't even think it's possible. I can't even see. I, I, I guess if you are a straight guy and you're living a gay lifestyle, 
and you're pretending to be gay, you're only fooling yourself. Because if you're living that lifestyle, you're gay. You're just trying to, you're telling yourself that you're pretending, but you're actually gay. So, I mean, I, you know, so I know that it's not a choice. So to me, you know, it, it, there isn't really a difference, but I don't have the hypocrisy. I don't make an exception. I don't want to treat homosexuals differently from other minorities. And it is a minority, right? The vast majority of people are not gay, right? I mean, gay men is, it's only, it's not even 5% of the population. I mean, sometimes they like to exaggerate their numbers to make it sound bigger, but it's, it's very small. I don't know, maybe it's two or 3%. And for lesbians, it's even smaller, one or 2%. So, you know, there it's, it is a minority, but I don't want to treat homosexuals any differently than I treat any other minority, because I think it should be legal to discriminate against anybody. See, I'm not trying uh, to to carve out an exception in looking like a hypocrite, because all the, the people who would say, yes, we think it's OK to discriminate against homosexuals will almost unanimously say, but you can't discriminate based on race. You can't discriminate based on gender. I, I, I am equal opportunity. Right. I want to treat all minorities the same. Nobody gets a special treatment. Nobody gets special preferences. Everybody is the same. People have individual rights. And if you're straight, you can discriminate against gays. If you're gay, you can discriminate against straights or other gays. Look, I mean, you know, what if there's a woman who doesn't want to hire a woman? That's fine. She can do that. You know, or a woman, man that only wants to hire other men or a black guy that only wants to hire other black guys. I mean, why can't they? I mean, who cares? You know, let people make decisions, let people associate with whom they choose, and let let people deal with the consequences of their behavior. You know, do I think it is offensive? Let's say somebody is a a bigot and they want to discriminate. Do I think that is offensive behavior? Yes. But does that mean it should be illegal? No. I mean, think about the freedom of speech. Everybody will say everybody has the right to free speech. I may disagree with what you say, but I will defend your right to say it. Right. That means people can say things that offend us. Well, if they can say things that offend us, they can do things that offend us. You know, if the government can make it illegal to discriminate, they can force you to discriminate. And if you know, if the government uh, can say that you can't discriminate because they think it's, you know, it's offensive conduct, they can also uh, you know, say, well, you can't say things, or you can't write things, or you can't think things. Once you empower the government to decide what what you can and cannot think or say or do, or who you can or cannot associate with, uh, you you have lost all of your freedom. And that was one of the things that was really uh, protesting, you know, really bothering me because when he was doing this press conference, he was saying that we are not giving any businesses a license to discriminate. Well, you know, the government shouldn't have to give people a license to do what they should naturally have a right to do. All people discriminate. And just because you form a business doesn't mean that you lose the rights that you have as individuals, that you have a right to discriminate in all sorts of things. You know, I mean, go back to the, go back to the, the baker, right? I mean, what if, what if a, uh, a guy that's a member of the Ku Klux Klan comes into a baker, bakery shop, and says, hey, we're having a party over at the Klan. You know, I want you to bake us a big cake. And by the way, I'd like you to put a little figurine on the top of a little black guy. And I want you to have him dangling from a noose. And that's going to be on the top of the cake. Does that baker have to bake that cake? Why? No. <laughs> Can't he say, I'm not going to bake that cake? Especially, what if the baker is black or Jewish? That might even be more so. You know, that he doesn't want to bake that cake. Or, you know, what, what if the guy comes in... What if he's from the neo-Nazis and they're having a a big party and the guy wants me to bake him a cake with a bunch of swastikas all over it? Would I I have to bake that cake just because the customer asked me to bake that cake? No. You know, I mean, I I, I can discriminate. I can discriminate against Nazis. I can discriminate against Klansmen. Not that I'm saying that homosexuals are in that category, but it's still an act of discrimination. Right now, somebody might say, well, we're all, you know, you can discriminate for some reasons, but not others. Well, no. Who's that to say? How why can the government determine when I can discriminate and when I can't? If I have a right to discriminate, it is universal. I get to pick the, re, you know, the criteria upon which I want to discriminate. 
And again, as I said before, in reality, very few businesses will make irrational discriminations. You know, if anything, private citizens might do it and they're more likely to do it because, you know, if 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 I am a, a bigot, let's say, and let's say I don't like blacks, I might not have any black friends, you know, because, you know, turning down black friends, you know, there's no real financial uh, penalty to me. But if I'm a businessman hiring people and I'm a bigot, I'm not going to necessarily turn down black job applicants if they're the best qualified for the job, because there I've, I'm kind of approaching it as a business. I'm looking at the bottom line. It's not just a social gathering, uh, you know, where, you know, where, where, where it's just, you know, it's just about, you know, other preferences where there's no adverse consequences to just kind of, you know, not having black friends. Now, I think some people that say, well, I don't want to have any black friends. Well, you know, they're going to close themselves off to maybe a lot of good friendships. And, uh, you know, maybe their life could evolve in, in a different path if they're shutting themselves off to those opportunities. But, you know, that kind of behavior is still not illegal. We don't we don't force people. You know, I mean, look at all the discrimination women. You get all these women talk about, oh, you shouldn't be able to discriminate. Well, I mean, do women accept dates, you know, from every guy that asks them out? No, I mean, <laughs> they do. I mean, discriminate all the time. You know, no, I mean, the guy's too short. The guy's too fat. The guy's uh, the guy's too thin. I, I, you know, the, he doesn't have enough hair. He's got too much hair. His nose is too big. Right. Whatever. I mean, women have all sorts of reasons that they're going to decide to date a guy and not date a guy. It's all discrimination. And of course, some women could discriminate based on race. Right. I don't want to date a black man. I don't want to date an Asian man. Right. That's, you know, I don't want a, a religion, too. I don't want to date a Jewish man. I mean, all and, and all this stuff is OK. We're not going to condemn an individual for making this personal choice. But, you know, Put a put a camera in the guy's hand and make him a photographer, and now he loses the right to choose, you know, who he's going to photograph and who he's not going to photograph. But the thing is that Mike Pence, right, has to make a huge deal. Oh no, no, the law is not doing specifically what the law was designed to do. I don't know how anybody could have got the impression that this law allows discrimination. Well, they got the impression because that's what it does. And if that's what it does and you signed it, then stand on that principle and explain why it's OK. Don't just backtrack and be afraid. And why can't people stand up for the right to discriminate? Right. People are so afraid of that backlash. Right. Just because I want to defend somebody's right to discriminate doesn't mean I support discrimination any more than if I want to defend somebody's freedom of speech. If I want to if someone's going to espouse, you know, uh, 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 fascism. That doesn't mean I condone fascism. That doesn't mean I advocate for fascism, but I will defend somebody's right to stand up on a podium and, 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 and speak about it and advocate for it, right? People are allowed free speech. You have to tolerate that. That's part of a free society. You tolerate other people's differences. And that means bigotry and discrimination. If somebody wants to be a bigot, even though that's offensive, that's it. You deal with it. That's what you do in a free society. In an unfree society, you squash it. You make that behavior illegal. And that's what we have. Our society is no longer free because you don't have the freedom to discriminate. That's been taken away by government under the guise of, you know, more freedom. But it's not freedom, right? They say, oh, this is, they talk about this as where government is creating rights. They're not. They're diminishing rights. They are extolling privileges on people. And of course, what ends up happening is these privileges turn into weapons. They turn into frivolous lawsuits and they undermine our economy. They undermine uh, productivity. They undermine employment opportunities. Most hurt are all of the groups that these laws are intended to help. That is the unintended consequence of all these government laws is is that they backfire. But Mike Pence, you know, lost a lot of my respect. And again, I appreciate the fact that he's in a bind. He doesn't want to offend anybody and he's a politician. But sometimes you got to stand on principle and defend your principle and, and, and talk about why this is not a big deal and why a few religious people, right, not photographing gay weddings, 
or bacon cakes for gay weddings, why it's no big deal, why it's not going to end homosexuality, why it's not a threat to the homosexual lifestyle, while everyone in the world doesn't have to come down on Indiana, right, like there's some kind of evil, horrible people because they want to recognize the fact that some people might have a religious objection to participating in a gay wedding. And again, if I was gay, I would want to recognize the fact that not everybody is going to be accepting of this behavior, and I would want to tolerate that, right? And it would be my tolerance, right, that I would want on display, not my intolerance, right? You are diminished. You are belittled when you have to react this way, when you have to have 100% conformity. I want to make sure that every single wedding photographer will photograph my wedding, right? It's not okay that 10,000 are willing to do it. If there's one that won't, then that's it. I want all 10,000 in one, right? It's my way or the highway. If we don't make sure that every single mom and pop photographer in the country is going to photograph a gay wedding, if I try to track them down, I want to make sure that if I start dialing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographers and every single one is happy to photograph my wedding and I finally stumble upon one that won't, I want to make sure that that guy gets punished. I want to make sure that I can put him out of business just because he has some kind of religious exemption to my lifestyle. You know, that's not what this country should be about. It should be about freedom. It should be about individual liberty. It should be about tolerance, even if what we have to tolerate is intolerance. Attention listeners, I have an urgent message for you. We're in the middle of a war. The global conflict is destroying the lives of millions without a single bomb being dropped. It's called the International Currency War, and your bank account has been drafted to fight. The victims in this conflict are our currencies, the dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound. They're all heading to zero as irresponsible central banks compete to see who can print the most the fastest. But there's one form of money politicians and central banks can't destroy, gold. Today, it's more important than ever to understand the value of gold in your portfolio and to keep a close eye on major market developments. Subscribe to my monthly video cast and you'll be the first to hear my latest analysis on gold investing and the currency wars. Visit goldvideocast.com right now to subscribe for free. I call the dot-com bust, then the housing bust, and I advised clients to diversify into foreign equities and hard assets while the rest of Wall Street laughed at me. Now I want to keep you up to date on the next crisis that is brewing. My gold video cast also includes personal interviews I've conducted with other contrarian investors like Jim Rickards and Axel Merck. Gold has gone up 256% since 2003, but it has a lot further to go. Don't miss the rally. You can prosper during this time of currency wars, but only if you stay educated. Get a free subscription to my gold videocast at goldvideocast.com. That's goldvideocast.com.